एवरी वन दिस इज शशांक मिश्रा करेंटली वर्किंग एज डेटा इंजीनियर थ्री एट एक्सपीडिया एंड इन टूडेज वीडियो आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट डेटा एनालिस्ट कंप्लीट करियर रोड मैप सो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द वीडियो इफ यू आर न्यू टू द चैनल देन हिट द सब्सक्राइब बटन एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू कीप लर्निंग फ्रॉम इंडस्ट्री एक्सपर्ट्स देन डोंट फॉर्गेट टू चेक आउट स्केलर्स इवेंट पेज लिंक इज इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स सो फर्स्ट लेट्स ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द एक्चुअल रोल एंड रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ अ डेटा एनालिस्ट because big data world is pretty humongous and this is a very wide array of job profiles like data engineering data scientist data analyst bi engineering and many more so we need to understand where these data analyst actually fit in so data analyst actually work like a bridge between the actual information and the client and customers whatever you want to call them so when we talk about the clients or customers they can be external clients as well if you are working in service based companies and you are providing the services then the client will be the external customer and sometimes even other internal teams can also be the customer so let's understand the responsibilities of a data analyst with a simple example let's say you are an e-commerce company obviously for you the payments part is something which is very important and even for the cxo level let's say cfo ceo they will be pretty much interested into the growth of the payments part like on daily basis how much profit we are making how much loss we are making these kind of stats which are pretty much important so let's understand if you have a transform data data engineers data scientist they work really hard to prepare that transform data so what do you think if you send these million number of rows to your cxos in the form of excel sheet or something like that they won't be interested to read it there should be a decent way to visualize this information and that is the actual responsibility of a data analyst the work for the data representation part whenever you will be having the transform data they will actually pull out the meaningful information out of it in the form of beautiful charts like the heat map graph pie charts line charts these are the things where the information can be visualized pretty well and that is the end result the customers or the clients want from the data analyst that is why their responsibility is very much important and this is just one single part because the data analyst are actually the bridge between the engineering team as well once you will keep on getting the requirements from the clients and customer you will communicate the same thing to the engineering team as well because based on our requirements they will transform the data based on the business rules and once that is available then the actual responsibilities of a data analyst will start so that was just a high level overview of a data analyst so that you can understand what you will be doing as a data analyst and now i will be talking about the important and very very required skill sets to become a good data analyst so here are the top 11 skill sets which you need to focus on to become a great data analyst first one is the programming and i would definitely recommend based on my experiences if you want to move ahead with the data analyst job profile focus on the python because python has actually become a language of data and even in the python you don't need to become a pro you need to focus on the fundamental first and then something around the data exploration libraries so if you start with the fundamentals like basic data structures of python let's say list tuples dictionaries and how to write the for conditions how to write if else conditions looping part how to write the functions these are the basic basic fundamentals of python and when it comes to the data exploration libraries then focus on the pandas numpy and matplotlib i know this might sound that why even this programming part is required for the data analyst and this is important right you need to understand it why if you want to grow in the data analyst profile you cannot just stick to the enterprise level tools you need to figure out those opportunities where you can showcase your actual skill set and here programming becomes a very very important part it will even stand out your profile where like there are thousands of application for same job profile so that is how you can focus on the python part number 2 data structures and algorithms and i must say this is the most debatable topic in the big data ecosystem and different job profiles this is most often asked question as well how much we need to focus on the dsa part 
is it really required to become a data analyst or a data engineer so based on my experiences i would definitely say yes the basic fundamental understanding of dsa is required doesn't matter you are coming for the software engineering profile or the data analyst or data engineering but the good part at least in the data related profiles you don't need to be a pro coder like you don't need to focus on the competitive programming side of dsa just basic basic things like how to iterate on array how to solve those problems the most logical concept of it how to work with these strings solve those questions around that linked list queues stack you don't even need to deep dive into the graph trees and dynamic programming related complex coding questions just understand the fundamentals solve few 100 or 50 questions around that and you will be pretty good with your problem solving skills so that is the thing required in the dsa so just focus on this range easy easy medium till medium not beyond that if you are doing that you are wasting your time just going too much deep into the programming part and number 3 databases this one is also very important first we talk about the transform data right and we know databases why they are actually being used obviously to store the data and the information so it becomes really important for the data analyst as well to understand what kind of databases they need to focus on and what is the best industry practice in terms of using the databases and how to even work on that so in the databases part there are two sections first is the transactional databases second is the no sql databases and even before that there is a part which we even have studied in our colleges if you are coming from the cs background the dbms database management system so there are few fundamentals of dbms as well like how to operate on the tables how transactions work what is the concurrency part the indexing the er diagram these are the basic fundamentals and once you are comfortable with that one then you need to segregate this thing the transactional part and the no sql so as a data analyst what i would recommend just focus on the mysql and postgres in terms of the transactional databases and if you want to start with the no sql databases then pick any one there are lots of popular databases like cassandra mongodb but these are the two ones i would say are good enough to start with and this is the main part of the databases even in the databases i have seen lots of confusion that data analyst why they are even supposed to know about the no sql databases our day to day responsibilities will be around transactional databases just query the things quickly but when we talk about the big data space multiple times companies are using no sql databases as well for the historical data analytics that's why it becomes very much important to understand these two aspects of the databases part number 4 sql that means structured query language or basically a mechanism to query the data and honestly speaking this is the bread and butter for all the data professional doesn't matter data engineers data scientist and data analyst but very much important for the data analyst now let's understand what happens in this sql part so we talked about the databases where our meaningful information will be stored but when it comes to the aggregation part there will be like 50 or 100 number of columns in one particular table in a database but we will be only interested in few columns to aggregate let's say doing the summation part doing the max min these kind of operation and writing complex logics so that we can see the stats for this particular let's say year how much sale actually happened and how much expenditure we did on our part so these kind of stats you will be able to bring out from those tables or the data which is stored in databases with the help of sql and that is why in your interviews itself this will play a very important role at least 30 to 40% weightage will be given to the sql part so what you need to focus on sql again start with the fundamentals like ddl dml dsl how to just create the tables alter commands how to select the data insert the data into the tables and after that the analytical part will come into picture like how to do the join operations when you have multiple data sets to join together how to perform the group by queries how to apply the case when statements and most 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 important from the interview perspective applying the window functions and pivoting so these are the few very common topics within the sql part 
which you need to focus on if you are preparing for the data analyst interviews and this is something which will be part of your day to day activities. Number five, big data fundamentals. Since we are talking about the data analyst profile along with the big data data analytics, then how we can even forget this big data terminologies. So if you are moving into the data analyst profile, definitely it becomes very important to understand what are the basic terminologies under the big data like distributed computation, distributed storage, how this whole cluster actually works, right? How we compute the things over a 100, 200, 1000 node of cluster. What are different file formats like JSON, CSV, Parquet, Evro, ORC, different types of data as well, like structured, unstructured, semi-structured. And within this big data fundamentals part, there are few frameworks as well, which I won't say that is a starting point for you because there are few other important skill sets which you need to focus on priority. But when you start exploring the big data part, the fundamentals, if you can explore the Hadoop part, how it actually works, right? How we write those Hadoop related commands to move files from here and there and even to do the starting data analysis, that would be pretty awesome. And second part would be the Hive as well. This is the most important data warehousing sort of tool in the big data and most of the companies are actually using it for doing the historical data analysis because this framework actually support the SQL type of writing style. So anybody who is coming from the SQL background and don't have any programming languages, they can easily work on this framework. And since it is widely being used by different companies, I would definitely recommend to explore the high part. And then if you want to upskill, then you can explore the Apache Spark side as well. So that is under the big data fundamentals, you need to cover all these things. Number six is the dashboarding tools. So if you remember in the beginning, I talked about the data representation part, like creating the bar chart, pie chart, heat map. So how a data analyst will be able to create these kind of charts or this data representation part. For that, the dashboarding tools will come into the picture because this is something which is the most important part of this whole data representation. You will be having the transform data in multiple sources. It can be a persistent data storage or any database. And on top of that, you need a layer or a kind of framework, or you can say a tool which can help you to write those kind of logics so that you can just present that information in the form of the dashboards. So right now in the industry, there are many data dashboarding tools available, but as a data analyst, what you should prefer. So based on my experiences and based on the industry demand as well, I would say prefer Tableau, Power BI, ClickSense or Data Studio. So these are the four top demanding dashboarding tools. And again, I would prefer two things. First is the Tableau and Power BI because their market cap is quite big and most of the companies are actually using it as an enterprise tool for the dashboarding related things. Number seven is the data warehousing. So first let's understand what this data warehousing part and for that in the beginning I had mentioned about this part as a data analyst you will keep on interacting with the external clients to understand the business requirement and when we talk about the transformed information it has to be stored in a proper structure. So in the big data world, there are three things which are very popular. The data lakes, second is data warehouse, third is the data marts. So data warehouse is a segment where our transformed information will be stored in a proper structured form. Like the way we see the tables in the MySQL database or any Postgres database. So in the similar fashion, information will be stored in the data warehouses. And that can be anything like Hive or AWS Redshift or any other data warehousing service. So in the data warehouses, there are particular terminologies which you need to follow as a data analyst because you know the requirements, you understand how multiple data sets will relate with each other, what should be the primary key part, what should be the foreign key part, all these kind of understanding you will be having. So in order to get the result, that means the analytical queries to make it more faster, our data warehouses should also be optimized. That is why you need to focus on terminologies like how to design a star schema, how to design a snowflake schema, 
what is the fact table, what is the dimension table, what is the slowly changing dimension, their types and even how to solve the practical use cases. Because in the interviews, interviewer will give you the direct question. Let's say design a data warehouse for Zomato, design a data warehouse for Amazon. And here you need to think upon how the whole structured information can be stored in an optimal way so that query retrieval is also very very fast. So this is about the data warehousing and again I would say from the interview perspective and from your day to day activities as a data analyst this is very much important. Moving on to the next one which is the advanced excel. So excel is definitely a very very basic tool in order to store the information and also visualize the information till some extent. And honestly talking about the excel part most of the industry leaderships they are pretty much comfortable with that. They are not very much interested in the latest or modern enterprise tools which is helping the industry in order to visualize the information. They are still very very comfortable for the excel. Nowadays even if you go for the meetings or presentations with the external clients you will quickly open your excel sheet and will try to show those stats and figures which can help you as well to convince your clients. And that is how Excel is something which is very very popular. So based on my experiences as well, I have seen so many data scientists, I have seen so many data analysts, BI engineers and all sort of analyst profiles. They are extensively using Excel in order to do the data manipulation, applying some functions on top of it, creating the pivot tables, the charts, graph doing the VLOOKUP part and writing the automated macros. So these are some basic basic things which you even need to cover in the advanced excel part. And I must say as a data analyst you will keep on using excel for your day to day activities because excel is still a very very basic medium or a tool for the data manipulation part. Number 9 ETL tools. ETL tools means extraction, transformation and load part. Now you must be thinking as a data analyst why am I supposed to know about ETL tools because in the companies right in your day to day activities there will be lots of opportunities which will be coming for you where you need to showcase your skill sets of the data extraction part the transformation part and the load part as well. And as a data analyst since you are not too much into the engineering side of creating scalable data pipelines. So there are definitely so many popular enterprise tool in the market which provides you the user interface where you can simply log in and it will be a simple drag and drop feature for you where you can make a connection to multiple data sources right let's say the MySQL tables or any NoSQL tables or any persistent file storage just simply make a connection and after that you can write your simple transformation logics like filtering the data sets then applying some group buys, joining two and more data sets together and whatever will be the end results you can even load that one into any of the database or any persistent file storage system so that this whole ETL pipeline will be done it will be completely automated and that is something which is important part if you want to churn some data you want to get some meaningful information time to time you need to do these kind of activities as well. So when I talk about the enterprise tools, so what are the popular things available in the market? So as a data analyst, you can focus on Informatica, Tableau and Tailend. But first two are very important because there again market cap is something which is quite big and most of the companies are using it for seamless ETL processing and automated ETL pipelines. Number 10 is the statistics. So statistics in the big data world comes around the data manipulation and basic mathematics part at least for the data analyst. So with respect to the mathematics simple use like the mean, median, mode, calculating the standard deviation, percentile, permutation combination and the probability because this is something which will help you to find the outliers from the data set. It will help you to figure out what are the red flags and green flags in your transformed data set. And this is something which is actually needed in order to generalize the thing or to categorize your transform information based on some mathematical rules. After that there are data sampling related things, data distribution related things 
and you don't need to deep dive too much into the mathematical aspect of data analysis because that is something which is a responsibility of data scientist they are supposed to deep dive into mathematics like calculus linear algebra all these things but as a data analyst whatever i have talked about previously this is a simple thing you need to focus in the statistics last but definitely not the least soft skills so as a data analyst you need to interact with the leaders you need to interact with the clients and you need to gather that information which is required to get the meaningful insights because this information will be flowed to the engineering team they will be working on the data transformation and once that is available then you will be doing the data representation part so as a data analyst under the soft skill part you need to focus on the communication part you need to focus on the client interaction and the presentation skills you need to focus on the documentation part fourth you also need to have a really good understanding of data domain for an example you are working for the healthcare company and if you don't have any idea about the terminologies of healthcare data that means you are not doing your job in a right way so if i have to summarize all these things under the soft skill part you need to focus on it because information needs to be passed in a proper channel and that is why your soft skill will play a very very important role so with this we have come to the end of this video i hope these skill sets will definitely help you to move in the right direction to become a top notch data analyst and if you find it informative then make sure to hit the like button and if you have any query related to the data analyst data analysis profile make sure to put your query in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the notification icon